Well, space just hit us with its hugest black hole collision ever. What? You didn't feel that? Well, actually, you weren't supposed to. Two absolutely massive black holes spiraled into each other and smashed together, forming a brand new black hole about 225 times the mass of our Sun. This space catastrophe must have been epic. And if Earth had been in the way, it would have obliterated in a fraction of a second. Whew. Now, this whole event happened on the outer edges of our Milky Way galaxy. And we only caught it because of a team of super-sensitive space detectors called LIGO, Virgo, and Kagra. Now, these aren't new pop stars, and not even telescopes. They're more like giant cosmic microphones. They listen for gravitational waves, ripples in space-time that spread out when huge objects crash into each other. It feels like space is shuddering from the impact. Now, Einstein predicted such things way back in the day, and in 2015, scientists finally proved he was right. That win even scored them a Nobel Prize. So, the two black holes that collided were around 100 to 140 times the mass of our Sun. That might not sound like a big deal, until you realize one thing – they're not supposed to exist. There's this weird range called the mass gap roughly between 60 and 130 solar masses, where theory says black holes can't really form. Because when massive stars go out, they usually explode into supernovas that blow away most of their mass before anything can collapse into a black hole. So black holes in this range shouldn't be here. And yet, here they are. This is actually the second time we've seen black holes lurking in this mass gap. The first time we detected such an event in 2019, two truly huge black holes slammed together and formed one 142 times the mass of the Sun. That's a big boy. It happened 7 billion years ago. To put it in perspective, Earth is around 4.5 billion years old. Anyway, two black holes slammed into each other in deep space. One was about 85 times the mass of our Sun, the other 66 times. And when they crashed, they merged into a brand new cosmic monster – a 142 solar mass black hole. At the time, it was the biggest black hole collision ever caught. Now curiously, physicists weren't even sure black holes this massive could even exist. Scientists had this idea that stars that big would just explode and fizzle out, not become black holes. So this collision basically walked in, broke the rules, and left everyone rethinking the textbook. Now, fast forward several billion years. Hey, it's bright side, we can do stuff like that. After traveling across space for longer than the sun has ever been around, the ripple from that crash finally reached Earth. On May 21, 2019, it hit the LIGO detectors in the US and Virgo in Italy shaking their laser setups for about a tenth of a second. One little cosmic bump, and suddenly scientists had proof – those giant black holes were real. As for that missing nine suns worth of mass, it turned into pure energy in the crash. That's what powered the gravitational wave strong enough to hit us after 7 billion years on the road. By analyzing the wave's shape, basically its wiggles, Researchers could figure out exactly what kind of black holes were involved and how massive they were. We could compare it with hearing the faintest echo of a giant cosmic drum solo and being able to tell what kind of drumsticks were used. Now, in any case, every time something like this happens, it pushes scientists to rethink the rules of how black holes are born. The leading theory now is that such giants don't come from dying stars at all. They probably form when other, smaller black holes merge again and again like cosmic Lego bricks snapping together over time. Normally, black holes fall into two camps. There are stellar mass black holes – a few to a few dozen times the mass of the Sun. When a massive star, like eight times heavier than the Sun, burns through its fuel, it doesn't just fade away – it collapses, rebounds, and explodes in a supernova. What's left behind depends on how massive it was. Medium big ones leave behind a neutron star, an ultra-dense remnant of a star. But if it were 20 times the Sun or more, 
it collapses all the way down into a stellar mass black hole. Now, most of the stellar mass black holes we've spotted are that clingy type, paired with stars. Some suck gas from their partner stars and light up in X-rays. We call those X-ray binaries. Thanks to those dramatic duos, we've found around 50 black holes in our galaxy so far. But scientists think there could be up to 100 million lurking quietly in the Milky Way. So yeah, we're surrounded. Next, there are supermassive black holes, the behemoths, chilling in the center of galaxies, millions to billions of solar masses big. Almost every big galaxy out there, including our own Milky Way, has a supermassive black hole. Our own galaxy's own heavyweight champ is Sagittarius A star. It tips the cosmic scales at about 4 million times our sun's mass. That sounds huge, but compared to other galaxies, it's kind of a lightweight. Take the black hole in the galaxy Holmberg 15A, for example. It's got at least 40 billion suns worth of mass. Ooh, that's a big boy. How these mega monsters got so huge is still a mystery. Some faraway galaxies show us that supermassive black holes form super early, like within the first billion years after the universe was born. One idea is that they started out as giant stars, collapsing in the early universe. Scientists know that these giants keep getting bigger by gobbling up smaller stuff, like stars, neutron stars, and even smaller black holes. And when galaxies crash into each other, their black holes can merge too creating even bigger beasts. But the ones in the middle, the so-called intermediate mass black holes, are the unicorns. Rare, weird, and super hard to spot. That's why this new collision is such a big deal. It might finally be solid proof that these elusive in-betweeners are out there. So how do we even know this record-breaking black hole crash happened? Well, it all started on November 23, 2023, when two ultra-tiny ripples in space-time passed through Earth. They were picked up by LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, which has two massive detectors, one in Louisiana and one in Washington. These places are like giant cosmic tuning forks, just listening for space quakes. Each LIGO detector has two, two-and-a-half-mile-long arms in an L-shape, with laser beams running down both sides. If a gravitational wave, like the one from a black hole crash, sweeps through Earth, it stretches space in one direction and squeezes it in another. That slightly messes with the timing of the laser beams. And even those microscopic changes are enough to signal that something huge just happened out there. Now, the signal they caught this time wasn't your everyday ripple. It was complicated, because the two black holes involved were not only massive, but also spinning like crazy. And that's a big problem for astronomers. You see, when black holes spin super fast, the math behind tracking and understanding them becomes way messier and harder to pin down. So when scientists try to match this wild signal to their models, simulations of different black hole collisions, they didn't get one clear answer. Instead, they received a bunch of possible scenarios. What they do know is this. The black holes were huge, and one of them might fall into that mass gap zone again, that mysterious range where black holes aren't supposed to exist. But because the spin throws off experts' calculations, well, they can't say for sure. To get clearer answers, scientists need better models. And to build those, they need more examples of these rare, high-spin black hole mergers. Thankfully, that's not impossible. LIGO, Virgo, and Kegra have already detected around 300 black hole collisions since they started in 2015. And just in their latest run, 200 mergers. But here's the thing. This whole operation could be in danger. Unfortunately, LIGO is facing serious budget cuts, which might shut down one of its detectors. According to its director, without both detectors running, catching these once-in-a-universe signals could become near impossible. So yeah, we're getting better at hearing the universe whisper, but there's a chance we might have to start plugging our ears, just when it's getting interesting.
that's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.